Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So we will be starting with backtracking problems. And I have already made a couple of uh, videos on backtracking in lead code uh, series. So go to that uh, playlist, lead code problems. You will get some idea how do we approach backtracking problem. Although I will be discussing the entire solution. Okay. So before I begin the video, I would like to talk uh, about this ebook. Uh, this ebook is on data structures and algorithms. And if you're preparing for a coding interview, then DSA is a must, right? It also has 15 plus HR questions. This book is written by a software engineer who has himself worked in multinational companies. He has put all his knowledge in one place. And it saves a lot of time actually, because you won't have to scatter your head, look for different uh, places. You will have everything in one place. See, everything is there. Sorting algorithms, searching algorithm, data structures like stacks, double linked list, uh, linked list queues, tree, graph, backtracking, all algorithms. And I'll just click on one link. See, you can click on any link and it will take you directly to that page. For example, tree data structure, try data structure, implementing try. Okay, see there is pictorial representation. Many places there are, see code snippets also is there. So, you know, everything is compiled one place and it is uh, available for a very affordable price. Okay, so I'll leave the link in the description. Please do go and check it out. Fine. Okay, so let us uh, see today's problem. It is called find k a sequence of first n natural numbers. So given two integers n and k, find the k permutation sequence from one to n without using STL function. Okay, so what the problem is basically saying is, see, we'll be given two, uh, two numbers as input, n and k. And we have to tell the kth sequence, kth permutation. Uh, when they say kth permutation, they mean uh, starting uh, from lexicographically smallest. And what is the permutation? It is permutation of the first n natural number that is from one to n. For example, if n is equal to three, then first n natural number see one, two, three. Okay. So treat this like a string, treat this like a string, for example, or maybe an array, whatever, anything. Okay. So this is one permutation of this uh, sequence, one, two, three. Another permutation can be this, another can be this, or this, or this, anything, right? So they are asking us to find out the kth permutation. All these permutations, we have to find the kth one. And it starts from the lexicographically smallest one. That means our initial string will be one, two, three, so on until n only, or our initial vector will be all these elements. So I, the understanding the problem is uh, simple only. I mean, uh, understanding the question is simple. How do we you solve it? See, if we were allowed to use STL function, if uh, we were allowed to use STL in C++, then uh, what we could do is there is a permutation. I mean, a function, I think next permutation. I hope I'm correct. If I'm wrong, correct me in the description. There is, I think this, so here you pass uh, the string s dot begin, uh, s dot end, like this you pass. And I guess you need a do while loop here. And you say while this. So this will keep generating all the permutations in this loop, okay. And whenever you get the kth one, whenever you get the kth permutation, print it. You can do something like that if you were allowed to use STL. But here we can't do STL. So what to do? We have to use backtracking concept. How will we use backtracking concept over here? Okay, see. Initially, we don't have anything. Okay, initially we don't have anything. We just have N and K. Fine. But we know that the sequence is 1, 2, so on until N. Okay. So what we'll do, we will start traversing this sequence, one, two, so on until n. So I'll write this sequence over here for any number n, whatever. Fine. So, 
okay let us tra start traversing first we'll encounter one okay one we get we'll push it either into a string we'll either make a sequence into a string or we'll make it a vector uh, array only like an array we'll make fine uh, so let us say we're making it a string only for example or let us say vector fine vector yeah i'll write here let's say we are making a vector we are making an array of this uh, of the sequence so our array will initially now we'll uh, after we encounter one we'll put one in our array okay then what we'll do we will call our function again we will call our function again we'll make a function call fine why are we doing this because we want to traverse the see uh, these numbers we want to traverse the loop again we want to go again and find out different uh, integers to add in our array because ultimately we have to make a sequence of length n only we have to make a sequence so what we'll do we will call a we'll call the function okay and again our function will do the same thing that is it will start uh, the loop from 1 it will go on until n so again we'll encounter 1 but we already have 1 in our array so we don't want to put 1 again here we don't want to make the array 1 again like not 1 1 we can't use single element multiple times so for that reason we'll have a set an ordered set whatever basically or maybe just a hash map also a hash array why we need hash array because we want to check if we have already included that number in our array have we included that number so that's why we need a set so when we call the function it will start traversing again from 1 to n it will find out okay one it has already been considered in our array so it won't consider one it will go to two fine it will go to two okay now it will check two is it present in our array no so put two so it will put two again the function will be called again from when we insert an element into an array into our our array and we are trying to form the sequence after every insertion we'll call the array uh, sorry we'll call the function and our function will again start traversing from where will it start traversing it will start traversing from 1 it will see that okay 1 already included in array 2 is already there so let us include 3 so our array then will become 1 2 3 again the function will be called like this until n all the elements will happen okay so what i'll do is i will take a example now i will i will take this example only instead of saying uh 1 2 3 so on until n i'll just take this i'll take n as equal to 3 only so we have 1 2 3 fine first time what will happen we are at uh, we we are at 1 right we are at the number 1 and it will be inserted in our array and also in our set it will be inserted then again we'll do a function call 1 is it already there in our set yes 2 is is it there no okay so array becomes 1 2 again make a function call back to the same function tra traverse again starting from 1 is it present yes 2 yes 3 no 3 is not present fine so what we'll do we'll put 3 also and we'll uh, of of course we have to insert uh, into the set or you can use a hash array whatever anything is fine fine you can use unordered set it will be fine uh, and uh, okay now 3 now we see that our array the length of our array is equal to n 
the length of our sequence as equal to n. So we have successfully formed one permutation. So we have successfully formed one permutation. Let us store this permutation in another vector. We'll make vector of vectors, array of arrays, something like that. And we'll store this sequence in that. So when our uh, sequence length reaches n, we store it in another container and then we return, we don't do anything. So when we return, right, what we have to do is when we return, we have to remove the last element because we are returning to previous function call. So what happened? One was we took one. So our array became this. Then our array became one, two, three, one, two. Then it became one, two, three. After it became one, two, three, nothing happened. We just uh, put it in a container, this sequence, then return back to this function call. So now one, two, now it is trying to see if there is any element after three, we are traversing the loop when we are seeing if there is there anything after three, no, nothing is there. So remove two also, this is the backtracking step. So we remove the last element, whatever we had pushed in our array and see for another option, another sequence. So, okay, two also we removed. Now go back to this function. Here at this function, we have only one element in the array. Now check if there are any other elements apart from two and three. Apart from two and three, is there anything else? No, there is nothing else. So go back to this function. No, we don't have to directly go back. What we'll do from here, one is there. So instead of taking two, we'll say one, three. Now we'll say one, three, because in this function call, when we have only one element in the array, the set also had only one element. The set also had only one element and we were at two. So after two, what is there? Three. So in our set, only one is there. It is not three is not there in our set. That means we have not encountered three in our sequence. So our sequence will become one, three. That is how we'll get all the permutations. So we had one, one, two, one, two, three. Now see one, three, then we'll have one, three, two like that. So when we reach one, three, one, three, two sequence length is equal to N. We will store it again in our container and return back like that. Our array will start off with two, then it will be two, one, then it will be two, one, three, backtrack, remove three, backtrack, remove one, like that. So this is the backtracking. It will remove the last element and go back to the previous function wherever it had stopped, at whichever iteration it had stopped. So I will show the code and explain again properly. What I'm doing is I'm taking a, so you can take unordered set, don't worry, just for your understanding only I'm saying. And I'm taking the input N and K. I'm keeping a variable count. This will tell me how many elements in the sequence are left to be present. Which you see here, when we saw that, okay, we have a, n number of elements in our sequence, we need some counter, right? To count how many, either you can use the length function, size function or automatically, or you can keep a count variable to count how many elements are processed. So for that reason only I have n, then I am taking a vector. Okay. I'm taking vector of vectors. So this vector will be helpful in uh, storing the elements and getting the sequence and this vector of vectors will help me get all the sequences. Then I will pass it to a function solve. So this is where backtracking will happen. And finally, I will print the elements of the kth permutation, whatever the kth permutation is that I will print, but what is happening in our solve function? So solve function, Yeah, one second. Okay. So solve function, it is taking uh, n count and uh, 
this uh, vector set and it is taking uh, index. Actually, you don't need index over here. I don't know why I have written this index here. We are not using index anywhere. So this can be removed. We don't need index. Fine. So what we'll do is we'll first check if count has become zero. That means if count, which was initially n, see initially count is n, right? If it has become zero anywhere, that means we have got a sequence of length n. So instead of taking count as a variable, you can directly say answer dot size. Answer is basically our uh, sequence, our current sequence. So if that, uh, if it has uh, reached zero, then we'll push it in our vector of vectors. We are pushing the sequence in our uh, container and then we'll return. But if count is not zero, that means there are still some elements to be filled in the sequence. We'll start traversing from i equal to one to n. We'll check if it is present in set or not. If it is not present in our set, we will append it into our array. We will also insert it in our set because for future operations, it will help us in telling whether it is there, whether we have processed that element or not. After that, see, we're calling the function again. We are calling the function again, but this time count minus one because see, we have inserted one element, right? So how many elements are left to be inserted? Count minus one. After the entire uh, this uh, uh, this function, all these function calls are executed. The remaining statements which are below should be executed, right? That is how recursion happens. Then we'll remove the last element, whatever we had inserted, we'll remove that. Whatever was the last element, we'll remove that. We'll also remove it from our set. Now we'll go back. We are doing this is the backtracking step. So see, we had one, two, three. So our set had three also, but when we are removing three, we should also remove. Actually, you don't have to remove, I guess. Okay, yeah, because I am giving by reference. So if you're passing through reference, then I guess this is a necessary statement because when you're passing through reference, whatever you do in any function call, it will always be reflected because changes are happening directly in memory. So that is why you remove from the set also. So this is a simple backtracking problem. And uh, you don't need a index here. I don't know why I had written that. So you, first of all, I would like you to take this code only, try to run it in different examples and tell me if you're getting correct answer. Tell me, is there a mistake in this? So I'm really expecting someone to tell me whether it's correct or it, there is a mistake. So please tell me that. Fine. And uh, that's why the, the code is that much only and the solution I hope you are able to understand. You take example for n equal to four and make the recursion tree. And uh, it's all about recursion. So you have to dry run it. I hope this explanation was uh, helpful to you. Please share the video with all your friends as much as possible. Hit the like button if you like the explanation. And uh, if you've understood it, that's very nice. I'm really happy. And if you can code by yourself, very good. Please subscribe to the channel. It will really motivate me. And uh, until the next video, take care, stay safe, keep learning, keep growing, stay tuned. Bye.